A vernier caliper is a length measuring tool that is 10 times as accurate as a ruler. The smallest segment of a ruler is 0.1 cm or 1 mm. A vernier caliper's smallest segment is 0.1 mm, 10 times better than a normal ruler. There is a method to using a vernier caliper. Okay, there is this thing over here that shifts. You can hold this, this object over, over here, this yellow part, and push it up and down. So what you're supposed to do, right, is to uh, put your object in between these two blades. Once you grip them appropriately, then you'll read the reading from this part of the screen. So over here, um, there are two ways. These are the external jaws and these are the internal jaws. Okay, so the external jaws um, measure it normally, just like if you put an object over here and then you can clip it with the two blades over here. However, you can also measure the internal diameter of stuff, such as test tubes using the internal jaws. For example, if you put a test tube over here, put it, you put the internal jaws inside the test tube opening, then this will get you the internal diameter of the test tube. Let's take a look at an example of a vernier caliper over here. Okay, how do we read this? What is the reading that we can get from this vernier caliper? The first reading that you need to get is called the macro reading. Okay, for the macro reading, the first thing you should note is to read from this line over here. This is the baseline, and that is what we are measuring from. So, from the baseline, you read it to the nearest notch backwards. The nearest notch backwards is this line over here. This is the 1 cm, that is a 2 cm mark. Therefore, this will be 1.0 cm, 1.1 cm, and 1.2 cm. The initial macro reading will be 1.2 cm. <clears throat> now we're going to read the micro reading, which is uh, a reading that is taken from this part. So this is where it gets complicated. You must check this part out and you must see which of these 10 lines actually match up exactly with the lines on the top. So look at this line. This line is a bit off from this line. It's a bit to the right. Okay, this line is still a bit to the right. This line, even though it hits this part over here, it's still a bit to the right. However, look at this. This line is straight in the center of this bar over here. Let's look at the next one just for security's sake. This line over here is a bit to the left. It's a bit to the left of this bar over here, and this one is even more to the left. So, this bar is the best matching point. Okay, and therefore, we will read like this. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, this bar over here would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Therefore, the correct number to add in to your previous macro reading is 3. The micro reading will be 3. Okay, so previously, to re remind you, our macro reading was 1.2 cm. The vernier caliper can measure objects 10 times better than a ruler. So, the final answer will be 1.23 cm. The answer will be 1.2, which is the macro reading, 1.2 cm, and 0.03 cm, which is this reading over here, the number 3, getting you finally 1.23 cm. And that's how you read a vernier caliper. In vernier calipers, right, we have um, something called zero error. Okay, this is a picture of a vernier caliper with no zero error because when the jaws are completely closed, which means the, the blades from previously were touching each other, means we are not measuring anything, right? This bar over here should match exactly with the, the zero worth reading over here. This will get us a completely zero reading. Therefore, this vernier caliper is perfect. There is no error in there. So that's great. If you got one of these, it's great. However, very often, this line will not be exactly at this bar, even though you completely close the vernier caliper blades together. Okay, and it may look something like this. Woo! Wow, look at this. Okay, it's a bit off. So, when you close the, the blades together and it's this far off, now you need to actually check for zero error. So how do we get a zero error um, from here? Let's take a look. Now we need to actually match the lines again. So let's check which line exactly matches the lines on the top. 
So this one obviously is quite off, quite off, quite off, quite off, quite off. And then we get to this one over here. This one seems quite exactly in the center or it's the best match that we have. This one is a bit to the right. This one is a bit to the left. But this one is straight bang in the center. So the zero error should be counting from the front. One, two, three, four, five. And therefore the zero error for this uh, current reading should be plus 0 0.05 cm. The zero error is positive because this bar over here is in front. Okay, this reading bar over here is in front of the zero worth bar. Therefore, this little section over here is the zero error, which is positive. It is very important to have the plus sign because zero error can be either positive or negative. This is considered a positive zero error. Now let's take a look at negative zero error. This represents the, sh the shifting part that goes up and down. And now when the jaws are closed, this part is now over here where this baseline is actually before the zero. Therefore, um, when the jaws are closed, there is a zero error and it is negative. How do we find what's the zero error over here? Now previously, previously um, this zero error, we had to count normally from the front, which is um, over here, right? We counted zero, one, two, three, four, five, and the num and the line that matched it, right, was our positive zero error, counting from this way. Now, for the negative zero error, we need to count from the back. So let's count from the back now, starting from here. Okay, first let's find the line that matches. Is it here? No, a bit off, 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 off. And now we realize that this line over here. Is the one that matches. So now let's count from the back. This one will be 0, 1, and 2. And this one is the line. Therefore, our zero error over here is now negative 0 0.02 cm. So this is an example of a negative zero error. And the negative sign over here is very important. All right, now that we have learned how to read a vernier caliper and we have also learned about zero error already. So now let's combine them both together in order to get a correct reading. So let's tell a little story here. First, the first thing we do, right, we get the reading when the vernier caliper uh, is completely closed. So this will be the zero error reading, and this should be plus 0 0.05 cm. Now, we will now uh, open a vernier caliper and measure an object. So this will be considered a raw reading. And the raw reading where we measure the object over here is clearly 1.23 cm. To combine them both together, we will always have to minus off the zero error. So the corrected reading would be 1.23 cm from here, okay, the raw reading, minus off the zero error, which is minus 0.05 cm. That should get me 1.18 cm. This will be the final accurate measurement of the object after accounting for zero error. Now, that was positive zero error. So, what do we do with negative zero error? Now, this one is a little bit tricky. Let's take a look. So, for negative zero error, let's take this picture here as where we have already closed the vernier caliper jaws together. Okay, and there is a negative zero error. So, over here, the zero error reading would be minus 0.02 cm. This is, then after that, we measure an object and the object's raw reading measurement is 1.23 cm. The corrected reading would be 1.23 cm minus a negative number. Okay, so you must always minus off the zero error, no matter whether it's positive or negative. However, since two minuses gets you a plus instead, Double negative gets you a positive. Therefore, it actually becomes 1.23 cm plus 0 0.02 cm. And that should get you 1.25 cm. 1.25 cm will be the final accurate measurement accounting for the zero error of that vernier caliper.